Howdy, it's Kyle talking about New Jersey. In this video, I'll be going over various aspects of the geography of the state. I'll be talking about the cities and urban landscape. I'll be going over physical geography to include protected areas, beaches, natural disasters, and climate. I'll be going over economic indicators to include industries that drive the economy, companies headquartered in the state, tax rates, and agriculture. But also, I'll be going over some cultural aspects of the state as well. So, if you're interested in learning more about the Garden State, this is the video for you. New Jersey is the fourth smallest state in the U.S., with only Rhode Island, Delaware, and Connecticut being smaller. But it ranks 11th in population with about 9.25 million people. With it being a small state in area, but a large state in population, it's the most densely populated state in the country. It was the third state to ratify the Constitution in 1787 and thus became the third state in the U.S. The capital city is Trenton. It has about 90,000 people and the population is currently declining. It's the only state capital that sits right on a state border, so you can be across the Delaware River in Pennsylvania and see the dome of the state capitol building. And overall, it's just not a great looking building for a capital, in my opinion, and one of the ugliest ones in the country. Something the city is known for is a large bridge that says, Trenton makes, the world takes. And this is in reference to the manufacturing history of the city and the fact that many places in the world use those products. However, just like many other places in the Northeast and Midwest, many of those jobs went away and the economy of the city suffered. And to this day, it's one of the poorest cities in the country, one of the highest crime rates. There's about a 31% poverty rate in the city. The median house value is only about $100,000 and it's the overall poorest state capital city in the country. So overall, Trenton is very rough, but there are some nice historical areas in the city. There's an old barracks museum, which is a barracks built in 1758 that served troops serving in the French and Indian Wars. And Trenton is also the site where George Washington crossed the Delaware River in 1776 during the Revolutionary War. And I'm certain he was standing exactly like he is in that famous photo as he approached Trenton. The largest city in the state is Newark, with about 310,000 people and the population is declining. There is a high 28% poverty rate and the crime rate is very high as well. But there are some nice areas in the city. The historic area right downtown that's been gentrified is called the Ironbound. And like many other former industrial and warehouse kind of areas, you have a lot of nightlife and entertainment stuff going on there now. And this is not new gentrification. This has been going on for quite a while. And this is also where you have a lot of the local boutique shops. Also downtown is a nice riverfront park along the Passaic River. And the city is also known for Branch Brook Park, which is home to the largest concentration of cherry trees in the country. There are about 5,000 in this park, and when they all bloom, it becomes quite the spectacle. There's also a wealthy area called Forest Hill, which is where you will find the oldest homes in the city. Newark is also home to one of the largest Portuguese-speaking populations in the U.S. There are many immigrants from Brazil and Portugal living in the city. And it's also home to many immigrants from the Caribbean, Central America, and South America. It's also an important city in terms of higher education. It's home to the New Jersey Institute of Technology and the Rutgers University Medical School. So there are quite a few positive things going on in Newark, so it isn't all the doom and gloom you often hear about, but there are many problems plaguing the city. The next largest city in the state is Jersey City, with about 283,000 people. This is right across the Hudson River from Manhattan, and Hudson County, in which Jersey City lies, is often referred to as the sixth borough of New York City. And also right across the river from Manhattan is the city of Hoboken. This is home to the Stevens Institute of Technology and is well known for being a big party area for college students. But with Jersey City being right there next to Manhattan, it's also very expensive, some of the most expensive rents in the country. Right downtown along the Hudson River, you have many financial high-rises and the area is referred to as Exchange Place or often nicknamed Wall Street West because of many of the banking and insurance high-rises there. And Jersey City began gentrifying so long ago, it was doing it when it was referred to as Urban Renewal. So this goes back to the 70s and 80s and the Newport area in town is where you started to see the most gentrification. Another interesting neighborhood is the Greenville part of town. This is home to one of the largest Orthodox and Hasidic Jewish populations in the U.S. Liberty Island, where the Statue of Liberty is, is a national park, but it sits within Jersey City waters. And Ellis Island has most of it as part of New Jersey City after a lawsuit between New Jersey and New York. I'm not really sure why this matters. I think it was more of a na 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 situation for New Jersey. 
So Jersey City doesn't have the same level of poverty and crime issues that Newark has. It certainly has its problems, but it is faring better than Newark. The next largest city is Patterson with about 160,000 people. This is also a relatively poor city with about a 25% poverty rate. This is home to the second largest Muslim population per capita in the U.S. Only Dearborn, Michigan is higher. And most of the Muslims in the city are of Bangladeshi or Turkish ethnicity. It has two different areas that have been gentrified. One is called the Great Falls Historic District. A lot of art galleries and apartments and condos there. And the Great Falls Historic District refers to what is probably Patterson's most well-known landmark, the Great Falls. This is a fairly large waterfall of the Passaic River that comes near downtown Patterson. And the falls are part of the National Park Service as a historic park. And the other area is called East Side Park. It's also historic and is currently undergoing gentrification. And even though both of these areas have seen some revitalization, when I was driving around downtown, it seemed like many of the buildings were abandoned. But hey, in Patterson, that's just how it goes. Next in line is the city of Elizabeth with about 138,000 people and the population is growing. It's mostly middle class or affluent, so it's a little bit wealthier than most of the other larger cities in New Jersey. There's about a 15% poverty rate. The historic downtown is called Elizabeth Port, and this is the old warehouse area that's been gentrified. The Elmora district is the kind of cool part of town with the local boutique shops, restaurants, and bars. And there's also a nice farmer's market at Union Square as well. The city is over 50% Hispanic, with the largest group being from Colombia, and there's a large Colombian festival there every year. So those are the largest cities in New Jersey, so now I want to mention a few other specific ones. The first is Camden, with a population of 70,000, and it's declining. And this city is notorious for having a very high poverty rate, a very high crime rate, many abandoned buildings, just being overall a city that has seen many better days. At times, it's been ranked as the number one most dangerous city in the country per capita, and it's almost always in the top 10. But there are a lot of good things going on in Camden that would lead you to believe that maybe the city is doing fairly well. It's home to the corporate headquarters of both Subaru of North America and Campbell's Soup. It has a large regional campus at Rutgers University and is also home to the Rowan University Medical School. The central waterfront area is okay. There's some nice entertainment stuff going on there. And yet the city continues to struggle as one of the poorest cities in the country. There's a lot of air and water pollution, many contaminated sites, and again, really high crime rates. So in many ways, Camden is like East St. Louis, Illinois, where it sits across the river from a big city in another state, and it almost ends up being the worst neighborhood for that big city. But either way, it's struggling. Next, I want to mention Atlantic City. As you might have guessed, it sits right there along the Atlantic Ocean, has some nice sandy beaches there. So people from New York City metro area or Philadelphia or D.C. or Baltimore will often go to Atlantic City for a big party weekend. But if you don't live in the area, you might only know Atlantic City for being the city that has all the Monopoly streets. So it's a bit of a novelty to be driving around the city and see some of these names you recognize from the board game. But then you realize what a dump the city is and it's like, oh. And yeah, the city is a dump. And I know I usually try to be nice about places, but Atlantic City is pretty rough. The city has a 37% poverty rate and a very high crime rate. If you're going to go there, you basically have to stay right on the boardwalk or maybe one block away because even if you go just two or three blocks inland, it's really sketchy. But it's lost its luster as a casino hotspot as many other places in the country have new casinos. So for a long time, you had Las Vegas in the west, and if you wanted to gamble in the east, you had to go to Atlantic City. But that's no longer the case, and the city has really been declining for decades. And the last town that I want to talk about in New Jersey is Cape May. This is the southern tip of the state along the peninsula known as Cape May. There are only about 3,000 people that live in the town itself, but there are many other towns adjacent to it, and there are 95,000 people in Cape May County. And this is a very popular weekend tourist destination for people from all around the megalopolis. There's a nice little historic downtown, nice waterfront area. It just has a quaint small town feel, except for the fact that there might be a million tourists there in the summer. So it reminds me a lot like a town called Newburyport in Massachusetts or Bahaba in Maine, that kind of a small coastal town that can be overrun with tourists in the summertime. But if you can go during a weekday, during the spring or fall, it might be a lot less crowded and much more pleasant to visit. So now I want to mention just in general the Jersey Shore. And this is the part of the state that sits right along the Atlantic Ocean. And it's essentially a continuous line of urban development down the coast all the way from the New York City area down to Cape May. 
There are some areas in the southeastern portion of the state that are not heavily developed, but basically all down the shore is built up. Most of the towns along the shore are either middle class or affluent, but I think one that's very interesting is Asbury Park. This is a relatively blue collar working class kind of town right on the beach. It's got kind of a rundown downtown, it's got kind of a shabby chic feel to it. Although I do think it's undergoing a big revitalization right now, the downtown area and the boardwalk, but it is kind of neat to see just there is a part in the U.S. where you do have some genuine blue collar working class people right there near the beach. And even though New Jersey is mostly urban, suburban, or exurban, there are some parts in the south central portions of the state that are pretty rural. So you get to the part of the state along the Delaware Bay. I think people in New Jersey call this the West Coast. You have many more small towns right there along the beach and a lot less development. A lot of the area is very marshy and swampy, so it doesn't have the best sandy beaches. That's why you don't have so many big towns there, but that's why it's nice, mostly small towns. So those are the main cities I wanted to talk about in New Jersey, but it is important to note that the vast majority of the population of the state lives in the suburb of either New York or Philadelphia. And even the small town rural areas are really close to a suburb and not far from the thick of the megalopolis. So now I want to get into the physical geography of New Jersey. Even though it's a small state in terms of area, it does offer a wide variety of its physical landscapes, with marshlands and pine barrens in the south, some nice sandy beaches, river bluffs, and even some small mountains with ski resorts. There's more to the geology of the state than you might be expecting, but it's also more vulnerable to hurricanes than you might be expecting as well. So let's take a look at what Mother Nature has to offer in New Jersey. Some of the prettiest scenery in New Jersey is going to be found in the northwestern portion of the state. This is the area where you have High Point State Park and Kittatinny Mountain. Kittatinny Mountain is actually a quartz ridge and the high point of the state is literally called High Point and it stands at 1,803 feet or 549 meters. Also in this area is Stokes State Forest and this is a really nice wooded area and the Appalachian Trail goes through it. And some of the more prominent physical features in this part of the state are Buttermilk Falls, which is a nice cascading fall, and the Big Cliffs. So again, Kittatinny Mountain is actually a ridge, and the Delaware River cuts right through it. And whenever a river cuts through an already existing ridge, it's called a water gap. And so this one up here is called Delaware Water Gap, and it's part of a national recreation area. This is a 40-mile stretch of the Delaware River that makes part of the border with Pennsylvania. And the river cuts that ridge into two, so the part on New Jersey is called Kittatinny, and then the part on Pennsylvania side is called Blue Mountain. The Delaware River traverses the entire western end of the state and forms the border with Pennsylvania. But it's only the northernmost portion of the river that is the Delaware Water Gap. And the Hudson River in the northeasternmost portion of the state forms the border with New York State, the southernmost portion of that across the river from Manhattan. Another very interesting spot is called the New Jersey Palisades. These are some river cliffs on the New Jersey side of the Hudson River right across from Manhattan. The south end of these cliffs are right there in Jersey City and they extend about 20 miles north from there. So normally you think about being on the New Jersey side and taking those really nice photos of the Manhattan skyline from across the river. But here you can be on the Manhattan side taking some nice photos across the river into New Jersey at the Palisades. In the southern part of the state, you have Pine Barrens and Pinelands National Reserve. And a Pine Barren is where you have a large area of Pinelands, but the soil is very nutrient barren. So it can be very sandy, a lot of pines grow there, but nothing else. About one-fifth of the total area of New Jersey is Pine Barrens, although not all of it is part of the reserve. The Atlantic coastal areas do have some nice sandy beaches, and you'll often see many people out there in the summer. And as I mentioned in the part about some of the cities, as you get to the southwestern portion of the state along the Delaware Bay Coast, it's much marshier. So you have some kind of swampy lands that makes for not the greatest beaches, but that's why the towns there are smaller. Although the people whose homes are right on the beach are facing some serious issues with erosion right now. So I think it's a nice part of the state, but maybe not where I want to be right on the beach. Another interesting spot is Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge. This is a 12 square mile area that is an important spot for waterfowl migration down the Atlantic coast. And this is not in the southern part of the state either. This is only 26 miles from Manhattan. So it's in the thick of the suburbs and a nice urban oasis. For climate being such a small state, it's basically the same throughout the entire state. It's generally pretty mild during the winters being right there on the coast. You don't get the big extremes of the interior part of the continent. 
So overall, New Jersey is a pretty decent place if you don't like it either really hot or really cold. And of course, anywhere in the north can have big blizzards or major winter storms, but New Jersey is also vulnerable to hurricanes. In 2012, Hurricane Sandy did tremendous damage in New Jersey. It started off as a tropical system and made landfall as a hurricane at a couple of different Caribbean islands that came up the U.S. East Coast. It restrengthened into a hurricane, then became extra tropical, but it made landfall again in New Jersey. Overall, Hurricane Sandy did about $65 billion worth of damage in the U.S., and about $37 billion of that was just in New Jersey. There was massive flooding and wind damage all along the coast in the Hudson River areas, and it shows that hurricanes are not just a major concern for the southern coastal states. So even though hurricanes are less likely to make landfall in New Jersey than Point South, it still can happen, and they can be big ones, as Hurricane Sandy proved. So New Jersey, small state, but packs a decent punch in terms of its physical geography. So now I want to take a look at some of the economic indicators of the state. It's one of the most important states in terms of the overall national economy, with a larger percentage of the GDP than its percentage of the population. It's one of the most important states in terms of the banking and insurance sectors as well, but it's also a very high tax state. So let's take a look at the money in New Jersey. The GDP of the state is about $753 billion per year, which ranks at ninth in the country, and with it being 11th in population, it ranks higher than two states, North Carolina and Michigan, that each has more people. The household income is about $89,000 per year, which ranks at third in the U.S. Only Maryland and New Hampshire have higher wages. And New Jersey is also the state with the highest concentration of millionaires. 9% of the population there are worth more than a million dollars. Prior to the pandemic, New Jersey had the sixth lowest poverty rate in the country at 9.2%. However, now the poverty rate is 10.2%, and that's the third highest rise in the poverty rate due to the pandemic amongst all the states. And I think this is largely due to much of the population loss being from middle class and upper class people, which leaves the remaining population at a higher poverty percentage. So you may have noticed how these stats indicate that New Jersey is a relatively wealthy state, and it is, but when talking about the major cities of the state, most of them have a high poverty rate. So many of the largest cities and county seats are poor, but most of the state is suburban or exurban, and most of those areas are middle class or affluent. The largest sector of the state's economy is pharmaceuticals, and it's the only state in which that is the largest part of the economy. 13 of the largest 20 pharmaceutical companies in the U.S. have a large presence in New Jersey, and Johnson & Johnson, Merck, Novartis, and Sun Pharmaceuticals have their company headquarters there. But there's also a lot of biotechnology research and development, as well as medical device manufacturing. The second largest sector of the economy is finance, including banking and insurance. As I mentioned before, downtown Jersey City is often referred to as Wall Street West because of just how many financial companies have headquarters or a large presence there. Prudential Financial Group is headquartered in New Jersey and TD Bank, which is headquartered in Toronto, has its American headquarters in New Jersey. Another important part of the economy is chemical manufacturing, including Zeneca Chemicals. This is the Zeneca side of AstraZeneca, and they do a lot of adhesives and resins. Other major companies headquartered in the state include Cognizant, IT and Consulting, Campbell Soup, Century 21 Real Estate, and Avis Budget Rental Car Group are all headquartered in New Jersey. And Panasonic Electronics, LG Electronics, and BMW all have their North American headquarters there as well. There are quite a few other major companies headquartered in the state, but those are some of the biggest ones. Another very important part of the New Jersey economy is the seaport. The whole complex is referred to as the Port of New York and New Jersey, and it's shared with New York State. It's the third largest seaport in the U.S. by volume. But the largest and busiest part of the whole port system is the portions through Newark and Elizabeth in New Jersey. And proximity to New York City has also led Newark Liberty Airport to become one of the busiest in the country. Right now it's 12th in the U.S. in terms of traffic. For agriculture, New Jersey isn't one of the most important states in the country. It is small in terms of area, so there isn't a whole lot they can do. It's ranked 40th in the U.S. in terms of overall ag. But it is an important state for a few crops. It ranks third in the country for cranberry production, fifth in blueberries, third in peaches, and eighth in tomatoes. Most of the ag is concentrated in the southwestern portion of the state, which makes sense because that's the part of the state with the least urban development. And now let's talk about everybody's favorite topic in New Jersey, the taxes. 
It's no surprise that New Jersey is a high tax state, but it's actually the number one tax state in the country in terms of overall percentage of income going to tax. Most notoriously, it has the highest property taxes in the country. Property tax bills over $10,000 are common in the state, and that's to go along with the fact that housing values there are well above average compared to the U.S. The income tax rate are above average, but they're not really high, and the sales tax is 6.6%, which is below average. So the income tax and the sales taxes aren't that bad, but combined with the highest property taxes in the country, that makes New Jersey the number one tax burden state in the U.S. But New Jersey is what's referred to as a donor state. It generates much more tax revenue than it receives, so there's a good chance your state has low taxes because states like New Jersey are paying high tax. All right, so now for the really important stuff, the signature foods. The most well-known New Jersey food is a pork roll, or sometimes called a Taylor ham. And this is ham, egg, cheese on a hard roll. It's a simple concoction, but I think the type of ham and how they cook it is what makes it special. There have been many Italian immigrants come to New Jersey through the years, and you can get great Italian food throughout the entire state, but one of the specialties is called tomato pie. And I've never had this, but it sounds really interesting. It's a pizza with no toppings, very light cheese, but it's more focused on the sauce. I'm kind of intrigued by this, but there's a place called Papa's in Robbinsville that's most well known for this. And something else Italian you'll find in the state is called an Italian hot dog. And this is a hot dog with onions, peppers, and fried potatoes on a pizza bread. It's almost like an open-faced calzone. And this is the kind of stuff I like. Most places have a signature food that is some type of starch with a bunch of stuff on top or stuffed into it. This is New Jersey's version of it, and it's pretty good. And I want to end the video by talking about some random little tidbits. One, New Jersey is the only state in the country where all of the gas stations are full service only, which means you literally cannot pump your own gas in the state, at least legally. Oregon has a similar law, but many towns and rural areas are opted out of it. So don't even think about getting out of your car to pump your own gas in New Jersey. The state is home to the NHL's New Jersey Devils. All of the major sports leagues have multiple teams in the New York City metro area, but the NHL is the only one that has a specific team just for New Jersey. Although I'm pretty sure folks in New Jersey would point out that the NFL's Giants and Jets both actually play their home games in a stadium in New Jersey. The state is home to some major heavy hitters in terms of popular music as well. There are many major musical acts that come out of New Jersey, but Frank Sinatra, Whitney Houston, Bruce Springsteen, and Bon Jovi are four huge ones. And the very last thing I'm going to mention is the Jersey Devil. This is a rarely seen creature that lives in the New Jersey Pine Barrens. It's kind of a devil dragon looking thing. Now, of course, most people assume it's just a myth or a legend, but here are two very important facts. One, it's never been disproven. And two, there's a greater than 0% chance it really exists. So think about that the next time you're out in the Pine Barrens walking around by yourself at night and you hear some strange noises off in the distance. Now, don't get me wrong, it's probably just Martin Brodeur drunk and stumbling around, but you never know, it might be the real Jersey Devil. So that's my overview of New Jersey. I think it's an underappreciated state. It's a very important state in terms of the national economy, and it isn't all an urban wasteland and super fun site that for some reason many people think it is. There are some nice beaches, some nice wooded areas, some nice marshland, and it really can be a pretty state in some parts of it. So it isn't all just big cities and suburbs, but if you think you know New Jersey based on some things you've heard in the media or from comedians, check it out. You might be surprised. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more things about geography. I'm doing state videos like this, city videos, ranking things in all kinds of different categories and everything I do comes from a more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Alan. If you're interested in buying a pin for the viewer pin map that I update quarterly or just to support the channel, check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.